When I speak of destiny, I don't mean a set of fixed and specific events that must happen. Rather, I'm talking about the tone, the quality, the overarching theme or context of one's life journey. And that is your rising sign. The rising sign is not just you as a person. In fact, the person you call I is your destiny. Say for you to have a revolutionary destiny, you gotta be a revolutionary character, don't you? The observer is not different from the observed. You are life itself, looking through the eyes of someone it pretends to be. Royalty and glamour. Diana, Princess of Wales one of the most beloved and celebrated icon of the 20th century. From a fairy tale marriage, to suicidal depression, to retaliation, to revolutionary activism. In this video series, I will examine Princess Diana's life through the lens of her astrological birth chart, emphasizing the fundamentals of chart reading. This sign not only describes the nature of your destiny and life story, but also quite literally, the person you are, your character traits, your behavior, your unique personality. In pop culture, when someone asks about your quote-unquote astro sign, they usually refer to your sun sign, not the rising. This is a relatively new trend to astrology which was popularized by magazine columns, giving generalized off-the-mark predictions. If you study the tradition, for several thousand years, the sun was never viewed as an indicator of personality or selfhood. Now don't get me wrong here, your natal sun does relate to you on a very personal level. It just doesn't describe the characteristics of the person itself. This is why a lot of people never resonated with their sun sign, by the way. The natal chart as a whole describes the inner play of archetypal energies that make up your entire life with all its components, which includes factors beyond what you call me, such as the sun, the universal spirit, which I will go into in the next video. What you call me myself as opposed to others, meaning your embodiment as a person, your vibe, so to speak, your temperament, your facade, your body, and to use a gaming analogy, the avatar you're playing. That's what the rising sign describes in your chart. It is the mask that life wears in order to interface with the rest of itself. It is the lens through which God sees, senses the world. So, back to our princess. Sagittarius rising. From getting involved with royalty, to losing all sense of self-worth, to fighting for what most matters on a global scale, Diana's life could be described as mythic, adventurous, and larger than life. Do you think you'll ever be queen? <sighs> no, I don't. No. Why do you think that? I'd like to be a queen of people's hearts, in people's hearts. But I don't see myself being queen of this country. You mean within the royal household? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. They see me as a, a threat of some kind. And I'm here to do good. I'm not, a dis I'm not a destructive person. Why do they see you as a threat? I think every strong woman in history has had to walk down a similar path. And I think it's the strength that causes the confusion and the fear. Why is she strong? Where does she get it from? Where is she taking it? Where is she going to use it? Why do the public still support her? The sash persona, like all fire signs, tends to transform whatever it comes into contact with. That's what fire does by nature. In the case of sash, it transforms through motivating and inspiring. Diana having the position she had would walk to the homeless, people shunned by society, talking to them, feeding them, hugging them, even with her kids, the heirs to the throne. 
She was also seen stepping and walking onto active landmines, passionately fighting for their ban. We shall focus world attention on this vital, but until now largely neglected, issue. The sash persona is often bluntly honest. Okay, so your Royal Highness, um, you're currently concentrating very much on your charity work. Would you like to tell us why you feel it's so important to you? I got nothing else to do. <laughs> The sash persona is characterized by fiery directness, sometimes to the point of fanatical extreme. I want to explain to you why um, I've got married to Ray. And I said, well, we don't like her. <laughs> and he said, I know that, but you'll grow to love her, as I have. And I said, well, we won't. I kept saying we, not I. So it's a little crusader here. And um, I was really angry. And I, if I remember rightly, I slapped him across the face. And I said, that's from all of us for hurting us. And walked out and slammed the door. And he followed me. And he got me by my wrist, turned me around, and said, don't you ever talk to me like that again. And I said, well, don't you ever do that to us again. And walked off. The sash persona can be very naive and gullible, taking things entirely on faith. When Charles asked for her hand, she was like, fuck yeah, baby. She thought he really loved her. Why would a future king otherwise pick her? Well, herself she was immensely in love with him. But little did she know, the whole thing was a setup from the very beginning. I, I'm amazed that she's uh, been brave enough to take me on. <laughs> and I suppose in love? Of course. <laughs> Whatever in love means. <laughs> Charles turned around and said, what in ever in love means? That threw me completely. I thought, what a strange question. Strange answer. God, how does it traumatise me? I think that in context, Prince Charles was not looking for love. He was looking for someone who can share the burdens and duties of a future princess and a possible future queen. So, in a way, love was not top of the agenda. As far as Diana was concerned, as a modern woman, it was. Now, as you can see, there are no planets in Sash for Diana. This simply means no archetypal principle, planet, is being embodied and expressed through the agency of Diana herself, first house. Instead, those principles are operating within and through other areas of her life, symbolized by the rest of the astrological houses. Now, in order to get a fuller picture, of what Diana's persona was up to in her lifetime. We also need to take a look into the planet that rules the rising sign. For Diana's case, it's Jupiter. This planet is important on many levels. It is usually referred to as the ruler of the entire chart. If the rising sign is the person themselves, the planet that rules it is how that person instinctively goes about expressing its essential character the natural tendency which inspires them to act out their personhood, the instinctive inclination which motivates them to move their life forward. The ruler being a planet and not a sign, it has a specific function that is seeking fulfillment. Jupiter is that principle of growth, expansion, opportunities, and even plain luck. To give an analogy often used in the tradition, if Diana is the ship that is traveling the ocean of life, then Jupiter is the steersman of that ship. Its position by house and sign will tell us both the area of life and the manner in which the Jupiterian function goes about moving Diana's life forward towards its intended destination. In Diana's case, Jupiter is in her third house of Aquarius. I will jump straight into examples to demonstrate how this played out for Diana. Because keep in mind, no single and simple sentence can fully capture the symbolic meaning of astrological language. But for simplicity's sake, although limiting, here's how I'd put it. The trajectory of Diana's life is directed or guided by unconventional Aquarius, opportunities for growth, Jupiter, within her day-to-day -day life, third house. In her early childhood, Diana was blessed with a big house which involved large open fields, 
parklands, swim lakes, and even a nearby beach, all third house, in which she spends her day-to-day -day life having fun with her many siblings, going for picnics, and riding horses, Jupiter in the third. Diana was sent to the best schools in town, Jupiter in the third, where she always felt detached and different from the rest of the crowd, Aquarius. At age 12, a local volunteer service was sending students as part of the school curriculum to hospices and psychiatric wards, Aquarius Third House, in order to help other disturbed individuals, where getting them to smile was a major success story. For Diana, this was a life-changing opportunity, Jupiter, because it was there where she discovered a natural aptitude and a greater sense of fulfillment in doing that kind of work. It was Sarah, Diana's eldest sister, third house, who introduced her to Prince Charles during a chance encounter, Jupiter, when he was invited to their house for a casual grouse shooting party, Aquarius third house, as a guest when Sarah was dating him. Needless to say, this specific encounter dramatically changed the trajectory of Diana's life. During her depression phase while at the firm, Diana had the privilege, Jupiter, of seeing the best therapist, of having a great astrologer whom she really loved, and even a medium who reportedly enabled her to talk to her dead grandmother, all Aquarius third house. Diana received enormous help, Jupiter, from biographer Andrew Morton, who helped write and publish her book, Third House, which later proved revolutionary Aquarius, revealing what was really happening with Diana at the firm and subsequently changing the trajectory of her life. Diana was also blessed with one particular speech coach, Jupiter in the third, Peter Settlin, who used an unconventional methods Aquarius to get Diana to find her true voice after the separation. So I'm not manufacturing you, I'm just bringing out that bit of you that wants a voice, which is the 30-year-old woman, 31-year-old woman, who has something important to say. 